Good evening. My name's Nicole, and I'm coming to you from Guardians of Our Angels. We're just getting started tonight for our podcast at 8 o'clock for James Candy. Um, he was 17 years old when he went missing, and we'd just like to bring him to the forefront. It's been quite some time since he's been gone, and we need to, to put his name in the forefront and let people see what's going on and bring awareness to those around us. Guardians of our angels want to put a face and a name to every missing person there is. People need to know these people's lives. They are sons and daughters and mothers and fathers. Hi, Chris. They are members of our society. They're up and coming people. They are somebody's children, somebody's brothers, somebody's sisters. They are what society is made up of, people. And they all deserve a chance to have their story told. They all deserve a chance to be heard. And every family who has somebody missing out there deserves some closure. We want to make sure that every person that crosses our paths have the opportunity to have their story told and have the chance to tell their life. So what we like to do here is, is make sure that we can talk to families, uh, relatives, people who have known those have gone missing to try and get a better understanding of all the facts that are involved to try and get a better understanding on how we can help them um, find their loved ones and bring them back to their families. This was started by someone who who has a huge heart for others and is definitely making a difference in so many people's lives. And I, I have to commend Chris and his wife Renee on everything that they've done for Guardians of Our Angels. And I admire the plight that they've taken and the families that they've been able to help and connect with. It's, it's certainly um, a lot, there's no question. When you start delving into people's lives and, and finding out who they were, we connect with them, they're people. You, you start relationships with these families of these missing individuals and it, it really hits close to home for a lot of us. And when Chris contacted me and asked if I would do the podcast for James Candy, he he knew who to pick. And the reason I say that is is it does hit close to home for me, as you'll learn within the next little bit um, about James and his life and his family and and what he was about and who he's about and where we are as of today um, with his story. There's certainly um, a lot of information, but we want to get it out to there, to our viewers, to our watchers, and see if we can find the smallest bit of information that may be able to bring James home to his parents and to the rest of his family. We've been very fortunate to be in touch with his, his family, and they've shared so many things from their heart and given us an insight into who James was. So we're going to get rolling with some facts um, about him, about the case, about how you can make a difference, and how we can hopefully get some closure for his parents. So tonight, uh, we've got James Candy. He was 17 years old uh, when he went missing. He was going into grade 12. You know, a lot of us have teenagers, and uh, going into his last year of high school, there was so much that he was going to come forward and see and do. He was last seen on August 6th at 11 p.m. He's been missing for almost 98 weeks. That is a ridiculous amount of time. And being a parent of children myself, every minute of every day, you're gonna be thinking about those kids, where they are, what they're doing, how they're doing. And what really hits close to home is Nobody ever thinks this could happen to them. And unfortunately, it does. It, it does happen. So one of the facts that was reported when James went missing was that it was August 7th in the morning. Unfortunately, that time frame was incorrect and reported incorrect. So we want to make sure that we 
um, correct it. He was last seen on the 6th of August at 11 p.m., approximately 98 weeks ago. His missing date and time, like I had said, was reported wrong by the RCMP. There was also a missing flyer that went out uh, regarding James, and unfortunately the date was wrong on that. Um, definitely as soon as he went missing, media and getting that information out is very important. And it was more more so to make people aware, to open their eyes, to see those around them, to see what's going on. So that mistake did happen, but like I said, we wanted to correct it to make sure that time frame is correct. His description when he went missing, uh, he was about 5'8", 122 pounds, with short blonde hair and blue eyes. Uh, the family believes he was wearing a gray shirt, a green jack, uh, jean jacket, pardon me, he has blue jeans and a cowboy hat. And where he is missing from is Vigerville, Alberta. So to all our watchers out that way, definitely put that in your mind. If you have family out there, if you know someone out there, share this podcast, share the post, get James's name out there, put his face to his name and talk about it. One of the interesting things that had happened um, when he had gone missing, there were no personal belongings that he took with him. Everything was at home. <clears throat> On the morning of August 7th, at approximately 9.30 a.m., his mom, Karen, went into to wake him up and unfortunately found that he was not there. And at the same time, the screen from his bedroom window was leaning against his dresser. Now, another fact that was uh, misconstrued was that there was an argument between him and his parents. And I would definitely like to, to make sure everyone knows that was not the case. Um, James had gone through um, some bullying and uh, his parents wanted to also make sure about marijuana use that was covered. And we have teenagers. You've got to be open with them. You've got to talk to them. You need to make sure that they understand what's going on out there around their world. And so it was a family discussion. We all have them. Um, I am disappointed that it was misconstrued as an argument because uh, it wasn't. It's completely false. So let's get that straight out there right off the bat. So that morning, um, when he was uh, reported missing, um, there was also a note that was found. Um, although we have no, um, no other ideas of what happened, um, his parents do believe that he was possibly picked up along the local freeway or highway in the area. Um, because he didn't have a car access to him, he didn't bring his phone, he didn't bring his wallet, uh, no debit card, no bank action at all. So he basically left with nothing on him. So he would definitely, if something had happened, had to have gotten a ride from somebody. We want to know who that somebody is, of course, and that's why we want to get his name out there and put his face to his name because there's so many different truck stops or stores or gas stations anything along that area um, that somebody could have seen him somebody may not have been working um, when the search crews went out to find him or local law enforcement went out to talk about him and maybe you know they can see this this is shared from your family or your friends in the area and it, it turns on a light bulb because every little fact is important, no matter how small you do believe it is. So searches were conducted on the family property. It is a large um, property. There's a 14 to 18 mile radius. The SARS team and the CASTA dog teams comb the property. Um, dogs have a very good scent. Um, they, they can find people. Um, very easily through uh, garments or whatnot once they have that that scent in them so um, in the podcast that was uh, put forth by James's parents uh, the vanished podcast if you have a chance um, I'm sure we'll have a link up to uh, help find James Candy their their Facebook site as well and listen to this podcast it is a uh, approximately an hour and Karen and Colin opened their hearts. 
they they put everything out there. I had the opportunity to talk to Colin for about an hour this week, and he told me specifically they put everything they had, all their, their apples in that basket, to share and explain and try and let everybody know who James was, what he looked like, what he's wearing, what was going on in his life at that time, in order to help people understand and and bring him home you know at the end of the day that's that's what we are here to do is we want him home and that's why we are so adamant about putting his name and his face out there now when the RCMP um, after four days uh, they ended up having to, um, to close the search uh, it was rifle season um, that's what November is in that area, the general rifle season. So for out of the safety of everyone involved, the, the search was called off. Now, when I was talking about the, the dog teams that had combed the property, uh, in that podcast and speaking to Colin, there was a scent picked up in one of the local stagnant bodies of water on their property. The RCMP did drain it and unfortunately nothing was found. Um, there were multiple sightings, uh, possible sightings, and tips came in from all over, but unfortunately they were all inconclusive. Uh, James was suffering from depression. He was bullied growing up through school. Um, we had also learned that, you know, a girl had had feelings but didn't reciprocate them. So that's a lot on anyone's shoulder, let alone a teenager's shoulder, because there's so much going on in their lives at that point. You know, and James was lucky to have the family that he did that supported him and spoke to him and talked to him and they had a relationship because James spent plenty of time on the family farm working with his father. That's that's farm life. That's that's what it is, you know, it's a close knit knit family and they're there for everybody. James was a local rodeo rider and at the beginning of this podcast I had said this is really hit close to home. And the reason I said that is my son rides rodeo as well. And I know what kind of people you're surrounded with. I know how they can lift you up at that point. James had an amazing talent that he was just getting started with. And there was a lot of potential, a lot of potential in him. Another amazing um, fact is uh, James's father is a member of the local fire department and James was going to be brought on as a firefighter as well and working hand in hand with his father and I learned his grandfather was also a firefighter so that was definitely in their blood. As I was uh, speaking about um, you know the family farm and the close-knit the close-knit community and friends and family James was well loved. He's he's well loved there's no question about that he he always had a, a shining smile um, from the pictures that I've been able to see. He he had a love for life, and it's awesome to see in a teenager. It is awesome to see the light in his eyes, and that's a light that every mom never wants to have to imagine. They always want to see it. They always want to feel it. And I, I'm sure Karen misses that light every day, not knowing. And not knowing is, is very, very hard. Colin was speaking about um, many things that James loved and um, the time they spent together and his horse Tiz, which Colin still gets to ride, um, was a big star in his life. Uh, that horse, certainly changed James's life. It's changed his family's life and it gives his family something to hold on while there's so much not knowing. And I don't I don't want that to have to be them. I want them to be able to have some closure. I want James home. I want him in his family's arms. I want him sitting on the couch. I want those dirty boots across the kitchen floor. I want to be able to to say that, you know, his mom and dad are no longer grieving about his whereabouts. I want them to be able to, to feel him in, in, in their lives. They deserve that. Every family deserves that. 
One of the things that completely broke my heart, but warmed it at the same time, was the last words that Colin said um, between him and his mother was, I love you. At 11 o'clock at night, the night before um, he went missing, uh, they both said, I love you to each other. And there's so many families that we get to deal with that we've seen, that we've talked to, don't get that opportunity to say, I love you. And if there were any words that I would want to be my children's last words that they hear, it would be, I love you. And I'm glad that, that they had the opportunity to say those words before he went missing. And I want those parents, Colin and Karen, to be able to say those words to James again, I love you. Most investigators and the officers that worked on this case are no longer with the investigating department. Sadly, we all know what can happen when that happens. James deserves to be brought to the front of the investigation again. It shouldn't be sitting as a cold case. It should be active. It should be constant. It should be being familiarized with new officers and investigators that are in that detachment. One thing Colin did stress is the RCMP were fantastic to deal with. They were by their sides 100% of the time, side by side. He had nothing but praise to say for the investigators that he worked with and the detachment that were, were working with him at the time of James's disappearance. We here at Guardians, we need to be able to find closure for this family. I would love to meet James in person. From the stories that I've heard, from the stories that I've watched, He's an amazing kid. How else do I put it? How else can I possibly sum him up? A whole life ahead of him. A great kid who, who didn't necessarily have everything, all his apples in one basket. You know, fighting with the teenager things that all of us do. We all fight with them. You know, we all think about things in our head and, and figure out, you know, is this a good thing, a bad thing? How do I deal with this? We all have those fights in our own mind. And I, I hope that James has the, the opportunity to, to understand and see how much his parents love him because I've heard it, I've seen it. I know all of us at Guardians want to see that family reunited to give them closure. James Candy, 17 years old, last seen August 6th at 11 p.m. He's been missing almost 98 weeks. Share this. Share this with everybody you know. Make this go around the world and back because somebody knows something. And somebody needs to just think back for five minutes because somebody has seen him. Somebody knows something. Somebody needs to give these, these parents closure. And that's what we want here at Guardians. We all want Colin and Karen to know that James isn't just a statistic at this point. He's, he's, a, he's a person, he's a face, he's, he's out there. We want to make sure that everybody knows that. And I want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to share this podcast tonight. I would like to thank Colin for spending the time with me on the phone this week. You are an amazing individual. Karen, I hope I get the chance to speak with you as well. 
you two are, are very strong and I, I can't wait to see what our audience will hopefully share and work on bringing you some closure and bringing James back to you. So from us here at Guardians of Our Angels, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. I'm going to ask everyone to share him, share this podcast, put him out there because I know somebody knows something. Good night.